Hi, this is Priyanka and I welcome you all to Sujan Wednesday webinars. If you are attending for the first time, this is a community initiative by Sujan Technologies. As a part of this initiative, we host webinars every alternate Wednesday. We have speakers from different domains who talk about subjects like front-end technologies, UI UX, mobile apps, media, entrepreneurship, digital marketing and many more. Today's webinar title Lean UX for MVPs is focused on different aspects, tools and methodologies of Lean UX that should be adopted for designing MVPs. So in the first 40 minutes our speaker will provide valuable pointers on how to improve your UI UX workflow and build quick and minimal solutions for MVPs. The last 15 minutes will be for a Q&A round. I request you all to please type in any questions that you have during the presentation and we will take them up towards the end of the webinar. I would now like to introduce our speaker for today's webinar. We have with us Ravi Suhag. Ravi, an award -winning, uh, Ravi is an award-winning web architect, designer, developer, hardware hacker and entrepreneur. He started designing embedded systems and robots during his graduation days and later decided to learn to design and code. So he has been working as a UI UX designer and full stack developer ever since. Ravi is also a six time hackathon champion and is the founder of three companies with his most recent venture being Inspiration Edge. So without wasting any more time, I think we should get started. Ravi, over to you. Thanks Priyanka and uh, thanks everyone for joining. So yeah, I'm Ravi as Priyanka told me. So today I'm going to talk about Lean UX for MVPs. So you know with startups going on and so many products and so many entrepreneurs, designers, developers, it's MVP is turning into a like you know most important thing when it comes to building products for the startups. And being lean with MVP is also like you know very much critical. So I'm going to talk about few things that how you can use the lean UX for designing your MVPs, and you know to improve your workflows. So first thing first, like in very simple, what MVP is? I think most of you must be aware about that as well. Is this is a minimum viable product? This is something which is the core of your product. So if you're building any product. This is the thing your product is almost incomplete without. So it's the main basic feature or main basic thing you want to have in your product. You know, that's like that's I think pretty simple way is MVP. So so now so this MVP I think is you know so many, so many features, so many web technologies and things moving around, people, competitors. It's if you're building something, there are likely uh, you know chances that this thing will turn into like you know this feature will turn into an old thing in next couple of days technologies will get older its web is very fast so if you're building any product you have to be really fast while doing the user validation you doing the proof of concept and doing the checks and doing almost everything so the mvp you are building for the validation of your product or for the proof of concept you have to be really fast in doing that so that's one thing you want to have while working on the MVP. Faster, the better. As much faster as you can be, you should be. So now let's talk about like you know normal US UX processes. Where if you are designing something, if you are designing user experience, as you can see on the screen, these are the main process in the, in the process. These are the main things you have. You need to do the site audit, you draw the wireframes, you do the flows, you do the navigation maps, then you check the UI stories and the scenarios, then you check the user segmentation, what kind of people are going to use that product. Then you design the site maps, you do the content inventory, and then you start on the wireframes, you design blueprints, storyboards, and then you start working on the prototype. Then you do the specifications, you are following the brand guidelines and you are checking the colors, you are checking the fonts. And then you are doing the graphic mockups, you move to Photoshop or maybe Illustrator and then design the actual screen. And even after that you kind of slice the com com complete assets and then you forward it to the front end developer and 
So it's a like long and tedious process and there are so many steps involved in this that this is not any way useful for when you are like you know building something really quick like MVP. So we have while building MVPs you have to be really lean and for that you have to improve this workflow. So lean UX is I think in a very simple term is cut the crap and just build it. Forget about documentation, segmentation, stories, scenarios, forget all the crap and just build the stuff. You right away start building it. You have to be really quick. You have to be visual. With visual means uh, if you are working on something, you should be able to see the feedback live. It's not you are designing, then you are moving it, and then you are putting the other elements, and then you will be able to see that, what's going on. Collaborative. You must be able to collaborate with developers as well while designing for, uh, while doing the UI UX for the MVPs. Because that's most important. Because what happens is the it will turn into a loop thing. You design something, they see, okay, it's not development friendly, they will get back to you. And then you will reiterate it, and then this a cycle. So this sh cycle should not be there. You don't, you must have like, you know, complete flat structure and the collaboration while working on the lean UX and for the MVPs. So collaboration is really important and for the continuous. It, this process should be continuous. It should not be like, okay, you are building a full flash product. So you have to keep in mind all the screens, the complete product vision. It's not like that. You have to build features in one by one. So you're building something, you designed one screen, you developed it. You designed second screen, you developed it. So it should be continuous, not like a you know, complete process, you are building it complete and then you are moving it to the development side. It should, no, it should not work like that. It should be totally agile and it should be totally continuous. So I think these are the main four, four things you should always keep in mind while working on the lean UX. Yeah, so I think there is this myth that people think that lean UX is the minimal UX. So I think which is totally wrong. This, these two terms are like, you know, totally different. It's better you have minimal UX while doing the lean UX for your MVP, but uh, lean UX is not minimal UX. Minimal UX is you are not doing many interactions and you are not uh, like you know getting into um, maybe so many shadows and so many color variations and and you know so many interactions and so many animations, but you are doing the UX as very minimal. Minimal, whatever is required, that's there nothing more than that, not even a single thing. So that's something minimal. With lean, lean UX, you should have minimal UX while working on the lean UX. But that doesn't mean that lean UX is minimal UX. So lean UX is kind of the workflow you adapt while working on the MVP. So I think these two terms are very totally different and you should also, like, you know, it's better if you have a minimal UX while you're working on the lean UX. That makes it more easy to extend and more easy to build. So yeah, I think that's all about theory. Now we should get into action that how you should go about when you have any MVP idea in your mind or you, the entrepreneur have any idea in mind or any designer have this thing. So how you should like, you know, forward it to the designer or the UX, UI UX guy and how he should start working. So what I'm doing here is I'm sharing my workflow here. So you can always choose to like, you know, add more things or add your own perception and your own ideas and things like that. So yeah. So I think the very first thing I follow and I believe everyone should follow is the Pareto's principle. So suppose you're you are a UI UX guy and your companies and like you know founder came to you, okay, we have this idea and these are the list of features. Okay, these are the twenty features or these are the hundred features. And now you have the complete list of features. So first thing you should have in your mind is the only single word. You should have in your mind, no, I'm not going to do this. Yeah, very simple, very strict, no. So you have to go through each and every feature one at a time and you have to try to say no to every feature, right? So that's way you filter out the most important things you want to have in a product. You have to say, it's like trying to say no to almost every feature and this way you'll be able to figure out only five to ten things without them your product is not your product. It's not solving that problem. 
So the way it works is if you have 100 features, just discard the 80. Just pick out those 20 features you want to have in your product. And then you build those 20 products. So it's, and it's also not about just the UI UX, but it's also about if you are working in anything. Maybe you are developing it or maybe designing it or maybe designing the user experience or maybe interaction or in anything. Try to remove 80% part of the features or animations or experience, user experience or the workflow or the design screens or anything you have, anything, almost anything. Try to scrap out 80% of it and keep that 20%. Now, once you complete first cycle, well, you finish that 20%, then you pick that 80%. And out of those 80% features, you again apply Pareto's principle there. You again apply 80-20 rule there. Then you figure out out of those 80 that which are the 20% you want to have next in your product. And this way, you keep the cycle really continuous. And this is how you build your MVP on the Pareto's principle. So figure out what's most 20%. So so that's how you apply Pareto's principle at the very, very first thing when you have any product or any feature list. This is the first thing you should do. Second is as a UI UX guy or as an entrepreneur or maybe as a design, graphic designer or maybe screen designer or animator, we we have so much knowledge. I agree that you know we know about the process and everything. We know so much. We think about so many things. We think about usability. We think about human factors, utility. We think about the computer interaction, accessibility, marketing, and system performance. We think about so much. We try to be that guy who really know the part. But when working on the MVPs and when working on especially on the lean UX. You should not be a UI UX guy. You should not be a designer at that time. What you have to do is really forget about being, you know, the, forget about all your knowledge and things you know about UI UX and get into user shoe. It's as simple as that. You have to really clear out that UI UX guy and just get into the user shoe that how a user is going to think when he's going to land on your product for the very first time. Actually, this is valid for both the cases, even for the MVPs or if you're building a complete product. So you have to be, you have to stop being a UI UX guy and just be the user. And once you have this mindset, the next thing you want to build is just clear, completely clear your mind and the next thing you want to build is you want to build the story around your product user is going to come onto your website and then he's going to think the first thing, what is this product? That's the very simple question he's going to ask. And once your website is or your product is going to answer that, okay, what is the product? Then he's going to ask, do I need to use this product? And if the answer comes to yes, then he's going to move on, okay, how I can use this product? So I think these are the very three basic questions going to be for very fresh user and for a repeat user the only thing is going to be just coming to your website and using it. So you have to really see what's the first time user, how you are conveying that story, how they are going to use this product. So it's like very simple. They will ask just ask these simple questions from you. And just write write down these questions. And that's that's how you build the story of your product. That's how the story of your product should go up. You build different different use cases, product use case. Okay, this is my product. This is an e-commerce website. User is going to come here. He's gonna see what the product is. Okay, it's an e-commerce website. I can buy a product here. Now he's gonna ask another question. Am I going to use this product? If the answer is that yes, then he's going to go on to okay, how I can find what I really need to buy. That's a very simple question. And that's how you answer the thing. And so that's how you keep answering the question. So once you are on the screen that, okay, uh, okay, how I can find the information, then you see that how is user going to think the next step? Okay, what exactly I want to find? How I can find it? And you know, questions like this. So build a complete story of your product. How user is going to use that? That's very important. Now, next is we turn into maybe like, you know, we start using so many tools, maybe as you a Photoshop, Illustrator, and we just move on to so many complex things right at the time that we forget about designing it really simple, keeping it re really lean and keeping it, you know, 
very rapid, very fast and very smooth. So what I believe and I think you know is very important is you start with pen and paper, very simple. You have no screen, just you know, shut down your laptop or computer or any workstation you're working on. And start to think about, you know, just try to draw normal diagrams on the pen paper. You have this story, you have this use case. Simple keep for one one page of your story, just keep one paper. And on the first paper you just write the title, okay, what is my product? And on the first screen you answer that. On the second screen, on the second page you have in your mind your paper, you answer who is the user and why he's going to use that. And this way you design all of your screens of the, your product, or the, all of the wireframes or the user flow, the complete user flow. User is going to log in and why he wants to log in, what can be the easiest way of the login. So this is how you answer you know, more detailed questions on that particular page. So but the very important thing is you don't start it with complex, you don't start it with colors, you don't start it with animations, you don't start it with the you know, pen tool, pencil tool, you don't start it with the Photoshop complex tools, you just simply start it with pen and paper. That's it. That's how you prototype, how you should prototype your product. Simple one screen, one paper, and you got, here goes the title, and then you start answering more detailed questions. So this is what I call 3P, 3P. So you start doing the prototyping with pen and paper and you build the complete story on the paper. You just sketch it down. Now I think the next thing is people start into, you know, moving on to the really complex tool. They start it on the Photoshop and then they turn it into, like, you know, they slice the assets and they export the screens and then they forward it to the front end developer. I think this is very noble when it comes to designing it and developing it. But one thing we should keep in mind is we should keep the UX process or the UI UX designing process really lean and really simple. So what I think is, instead of going into any of this, if if, it, if there is a front-end developer and who know the design, I think that's the best use case you can have in your company or you know in the technology skill. And what he should really do is he should start the design of the screens just after the paper uh, paper prototyping into really HTML. You don't waste your time going to the Photoshop screen and everything because in any way you are not going you don't want to apply those many interactions or the animations or the shadows and colors and you don't want to do that. You start with you know, just designing it in the HTML. And then you just draw the layout, simple layout, so in terms of blocks. So, okay, these are the three sections I designed. You design the grid first. And then you start, you know, coloring it on. So you design the elements, you design the buttons. But uh, using Photoshop or any other complex tools for these kind of things, that makes process really long and really, you know, kind of tedious and you need more collaboration on that and you, this process starts to become more and more complex. So the best thing is you start designing in the browser. Even if you are a pure designer, then there are really easy tools where you can just drag and drop and use this thing to design directly in the browser. So this way it's easy to get the instant feedback if you're designing in the browser instead of looking at the screen and when you goes to the you know, web browser, you see something different and then you go back to the your Photoshop and then you, or any other, or any other tool, any other tool, any other tool, you, you can transfer it to the browser. So it's like very complex. You don't do that. You check the feedback right on the browser. You design it on the browser. And that's the most lean way you can design your MVP so you can build the UX, UI UX for that. So I think tooling is also really, really, really important when it comes to UX because the kind of tool you are going to use, if this tool is automatically taking you know so much of your time, then it will increase the time your product is you're going to take to build your product or design your product. So the tool which you pick should be really like you know, to the angle, just doing what exactly you want to do with that. No extra, you know, extraction or nothing else. So 
these are the few tools which I prefer using while doing the UI UX for the MVPs and just most probably in hackathons actually you can see. So because in hackathons you have to be really quick while coming to you know designing the prototype and doing the proof of concept. You have to do it within hours. You have to design the complete screen, stories and everything. So these are the tools I use while working in the hackathons or most probably in the MVPs of the you know companies. So I start the prototyping definitely on the paper and use the paper and pencil only. That's it. And if I had to convey myself, suppose I'm building on a product that's for a third party company and obviously even it's an MVP, you have to show them how you know fireframes are going to look like and how screen flows are going to be, look like. So in that case you have to show them clickable wireframes. Okay, if, if you click here you go to this screen. If you go click to this screen you, on this thing then you will go on this screen. So you can use tools like mock flow which is like really easy. And you just drag drop simple bars and it look like pen paper prototyping and you can easily build clickable wireframes so it's like image map so it's really easy to build clickable like wireframes with Mockflow and it's it takes like you know kind of no time it's very similar to the way you do it on pen and paper and if you are building it kind of uh, you are showing the client or maybe the entrepreneur that it, you know with the more features okay this is how button is gonna look like this is how the placement is going to look like. You have to show that kind of uh, wireframes and that kind of flow to check, you know, take the feedback and everything. You can use a tool like Azure, which is which provides you more features on designing such kind of things, so that you can take quick feedback on that. And if you are doing the process like really high, okay, you are actually building it. So instead of going to any complex tool of Illustrator or Photoshop or maybe GIMP or any other tool, uh, I rather prefer going to code directly. So I build the basic grid first and then you start designing on that and you start designing the HTML and the complete complete screen right into the code just as soon as you have the pen, proto pen paper prototype and you have the, all the screens with you and you have the user feedback. And that's right away you move to the coding. You just start coding it and you just start taking feedback. You just design it, design, start designing the screen right on the browser. So that's about the tooling. Yeah, I think now um, being top of lean is that uh, even if you are building the you and you know most probably MVP, still it is taking your resources, it is taking your time, it is taking companies' money, you know, it's taking the, the complete resources. So it should not work like that, okay, you have built the MVP and now you are moving on to the product, but the design you have done or the stories you have built in while working on the MVP or the code you have written while working on the MVP is of no use. So they should not work like that. So obviously you should, when you start doing the prototyping, you should have that larger picture also in your mind that how your product is going to look like when it's going to be a full-fledged product. Right. So you should have this picture, but just the picture and just the vision you should have in that mind. So after that, once you are doing that lean UI UX or lean development, then you should have that picture always in your mind, and you should build the pro. Do, you should do the lean UI UX according to that, so that once you move from lean uh, MVP to main product, you can extend that thing. So suppose you are keeping it really minimal. Okay, so move um, just for an example, you are moving from this screen to this screen, or maybe you are just doing the login, and then you are moving from first screen to second screen, right? But when it comes to full-fledged product, you may want to see, okay, when I click on the sign in, I want to go this window slightly fade out, and then show the screen, you know, the main screen in terms of fade in. So this this will give user a really nice experience. So these kind of things you can have in mind. But moving from lean UX, you can use the same code or same screen to turn into a the full fledged design screen. So this is how you should think right, okay? So that keep it minimal. That's why you should keep the UX very minimal because moving from minimal to more animated and more uh, you know interactions, it's really easy. So you can use the same flows, you when use the same style, same branding, and you can use the almost all the resources you have put into the building the lean UX for the MVP, you can use the complete thing when building the full flesh product. So this saves lots of time and it makes the product also really simple to use because you have built it from a very simple way, a very simple process. So even you are doing the lean UX, you should have that bigger picture of your product in your mind 
and you should think in that way. So it's like you have this full-fledged picture and then you are just taking the sketch out of it and then building it into the lead UX, building it into your MVP. So that's how you should work like that. So just taking the colors, animations and everything out and just keeping the sketch. So it's like just the sketch part of your painting, complete painting. Yeah, so and that's how you extend your complete product from MVP to the product. And so I think in terms of obviously I'm talking about being clean and being really fast in MVPs. So I think uh, I finished almost like 10 to 15 minutes early, so keeping it more and more lean. So I think Prinka, now I think we can open to you know questions and we can use this extra time to maybe for the questions. I hope this will, you know, this will be useful. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Ravi. That was a great session. And thank you so much again for sharing your insights on Lean UX, workflows, and designing MVPs. Moving on, I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions. I have already received a couple of them, so we will take them up. If you want to ask your question using your microphone, you can press the raise hand button on your control panel to ask your question using the microphone or you can type your question in the chat box below. So I am going to take my first question here. Uh, Ravi, you spoke about prototyping, you spoke about what Lean UX is not and how it is different from Minimal UX, but Gulab wants to know what exactly is Lean UX. Sure. So your question was what exactly is Lean UX? So Lean UX is an approach to design some things if you are doing UX. So it's an approach that how you should, how you can build your user experience. So it's, uh, it's an approach how you can build it really fast, really quick and really simple way without worrying much about that complex process of designing the screens, wire flows, talking and talking about segmentation, taking care of scenarios, taking care of accessibilities and you know all those things. Uh, it's an approach to bypass everything and design the same features and the same flows but in a really lean way, very simple and very smooth way instead of diving into you know that complex process of building things. So it's it's in very it is a very simple terms it's a, it's an approach to build something. It's an approach to build the UI UX. Okay, thank you. Also, can you perhaps give some good examples of Lean UX? So, I think when it comes to Lean UX, so as I mentioned, so I think when it comes, so you can talk about the products, really good products or really MVPs, but uh, what, when it comes to real examples, it's the example that how someone built it. So maybe for any product, how I built, how what what exactly I did to do do that to build that MVP, is what is the real example of it. So maybe um, to have real nice example, you can talk to some really UI UX guys who are doing some lean MVP for that, and you can see that how they are doing that, how you can talk about their process and their workflows. I think that would be more appropriate example instead of I'll tell you, okay, this is a website and this is a prototype and this is an MVP. So, but that will not explain the lean UX and, and that approach. So, to better understand it in a more clear way, it's it would be really useful if you talk to any UI UX guy who is using this approach to build something or to design something. So, I think that will be more helpful. Okay, I hope that answer your question, Gulab and Naval both. Uh, our next question is from Jimmy and he wants to know what about the designers who use Photoshop after paper prototyping? Yeah, so it depends. So if you are really comfortable and really fast with using Photoshop and if you think that it's not coming into your way and actually it's not coming into your way of productivity, then it's obviously your choice that how you want to like you know adapt that how you want to adapt to that particular approach but uh, what i see is for few people photoshop is like you know getting into so much details and working with so many screens and so many slicing and then frames and everything sometimes it get into your view of productivity so it's definitely your goal if you think photoshop is not get photoshop or any other tool you are using is not getting into your way to build it really fast and keeping it really simple 
and to like you know save and more more and more time and being more productive, then I think definitely you should keep using it. But if you think that you can use this alternative, that will make my process more and more fast to build the same simple thing instead of going into detailed feature which you which you really don't need maybe don't need then I think it's better to move away from that tool. So it's definitely your call that how good you are with any tool. Okay, thank you so much. Jimmy, I hope that answered your question. If you have a follow-up question, please feel free to type in. So I'm going to take my next question here by Karan Preet. Karan Preet wants to know, when you're designing an MVP, multiple users of various personas will use them. So 20% Pareto rule, uh, might give different feature sets. So what do you do? You, do you focus on some common top features or do you just start with one segment of users? Okay, so I think as far if I can get it like you know, really nice is that uh, you are saying the product you are building have different segment of users and maybe suppose you have a segment of publishers or maybe have, you know different segment of people who are using it then I think one definitely there is everyone know about it that you cannot satisfy each and every user with the same workflow with the same design so I think definitely uh, I would suggest using the same 80-20 rule here try to figure out what kind of flow will satisfy 80% of your users here so it's here the purpose principle is kind of reversed uh, you can divide into a, like you know kind of four number with the, like you know higher percentage and lower percentage. So try to do that, and then building for specifically for that segment of users. And instead of going for you know definitely you are checking it for the MVP. Most probably you are checking your you know maybe your business model or maybe your usability testing or you are doing some validation with your MVP or the product. So in that case, it makes much more sense to pick that segment of your users, which are your, which are your you know, kind of core. And so and then targeting, you know, focusing on them. So instead of going with each and every user and trying to satisfy each other's, you know, everyone's flow and everything, I think you should work it in that way. So basically, are you recommended that that he should focus on the top common features? instead of focusing on different kind of user segments, right? No, no, so I think if you say this, then I think these are two different things. So features and segment of users depends on how you how your product works. So suppose, you know, these five, okay, so if he's making it, you know, Colonel is making this in this way. Okay, these are the five features the, which are useful for this segment of users. And these are the five features which are useful for this segment of users. Then what I would say is what kind, what, then you have to think about what problem you are solving and if you want to try to make a business out of it, then you should see that where exactly your revenue model is at. If you are building a product, you know, like, you know, without the business model or anything, then you should see that what problem you are solving and if you have the business model behind you, you have to see what revenue model is and who is after that, you know, who is going to, who are the users, who is going to more, um, who will be more valuable to you than in fulfilling these two things. And then you should work on the features, you know, those users require. So it's more like that. So the problem you are solving and for whom you are solving it. So those, that segment of users. And then coming back to, okay, what are the features those, you know, those that segment of users require. And then focusing on those features. So it's like more like figuring out who is your target audience and coming to a proper segment of users and then looking at okay, what are the features these users are going to you know, more interested in, and then working on those features as only, and try to skipping out the rest of the part. I hope this answers your question, Karan. Yeah, I hope that answers your question as well, Karan. Pete, if you have a follow-up question, please feel free to type in. I am going to take our next question here by Arijit. He wants to know that all the tools that you mentioned are they all free or open source? So I think uh, the one I mentioned for the pen paper is obviously free and open source as well. And the second I mentioned is Mockflow. So Mockflow provides you one project for free and after that you can take subscription. But on the one, well, I think one project you can have as many you know, projects and the screens you have. 
So I think it's definitely a really good start to work if you're working on one product. And if you really like it, then you can even move to like you know, in the subscription thing. And same for the Azure. The same uh, Azure also provides you a project and few features and almost everything you can use for free. And after that, if you really need and it's like you know we are working on the multiple projects and at the same time, then you can try to opt for the same thing. And similarly for the code, it's definitely open source and everything. So all the projects you can start using it right now instead of doing the you know mining and then and everything. So they are kind of in the both categories. They they are free to use as well. And if you want to move to the next level, then you have to pay for the subscription. Thank you so much. So our next question is by Swaraj. Swaraj says, Hi Ravi, Swaraj this site. Can you please share some real time examples with diagrams, thought process, improvements and implementations with final output? So this will help us understand the con con conversion from idea to the product design. Sure, I think that's a really nice question. So I think uh, right now we don't have this much time that I can dig into the files and the complete screen flows. What I will do is, uh, you know, I will create a blog on that uh, using one of them with page I built. This, so the, how I started with the features, I, how I use the Paragraphs principle to list them down, and then how I move to the complete MVP. And then I, I, I will put that blog and I think Trinka would help us in putting up the on the same page of decision, so like on the webinar page. And most probably you can go out there and check it, you know, complete thing. And in case you have any questions, you can any time ask about that. So I think that would help you. And I think that will answer your question as well. I think it's really nice and I would love to do that. Definitely. Uh, thank you so much, Ravi, for being so considerate. I'm sure Swaraj will like it and so will our other audience. Um, I will probably coordinate with you and upload the webinar, upload the blog on the slide site or we what we can do is we can share the link with the users if they want to uh, you know look at your blog and get into more details so meanwhile I'm going to take our next question here Claudius wants to know what role does research play in your lean UX uh, so can you repeat the question uh, Claudius wants to know what role does research place in your Lean UX? Yeah. So uh, research is, uh, you can kind of categorize the research in two things. So one is you are doing the research of your product uh, and you are doing the research of the problem you are solving. Or the second is you can say you are doing the research on how you should design the user experience or the user interface of that product. So I think uh, if you talk about the first problem, for the, the first research, that's more into building the product. So why you want to build that product and why that is important. So that's, I think, a totally different with, I mean, there is not that much relation with the Lean UX approach. So that's the first case. So once you have finalized that you know why you are building that product and why you are building that MVP, then you keep that problem and that idea in your mind, that why, that why you are building it. And then using the same thing, to do the research that what would be the best way to build this this interface and for that maybe you can talk to few people if you think that you uh, you are that good that you can build the screen and so simple way that obviously people are going to like it then you can definitely go ahead without wasting time on the user feedback and the user research and everything or in case you are not comfort you know you are not confident with that way then what you can do is you can use the simple sketch simple flows and you know just you can take this or that so it's like so the way I do it is like you know when I'm not sure about that is so I just to design it on the normal paper and so okay this login button is there for example login button is there this flow is there slide show is here and on the second screen it's there so with different steps so these are the two questions I have. then I simply ask four or five people in the room okay this or that this or that, this or that. So it's like three minute thing and then you get the complete feedback, okay, which flow is more intuitive. So you don't tell the people or the product and you just ask them on that, you know, what they think about it. So yeah, definitely research plays really important part uh, once you know that what you are doing and why you are doing it. So it's your call that if you are comfortable that, okay, whatever you are doing, then definitely you can skip the research thing, doing this research on, you know, testing or A-B testing or anything you can call it. And if you are not confident, then you can definitely go out about it and it will definitely help you in the way you build your user interface. 
All right, thank you so much. So it's more like in a self A and B test. Great. So I will take my next question here by Arijit. He wants to know: Can lean UX be used in products where UX is in USP? Yeah, sure, definitely. Actually, that's the best use case. You know, you would have for the lean UX when you have your experience at the top. That's when you care the most about your, you know, user interface or user experience. And definitely, if you're building an MVP for a product which is very focused on user interface, definitely you want. So I think one thing I believe is that we have built things so complex that now building simple thing is complex. Now the simple is the new complex. So if your product is focused on the user interface or your user design, then doing it in a really simple way is the best approach you can have to build a you know, really nice user interface or user experience. And if that is your target for the, your product and if that's a, your USP, then I think definitely Lean UX is the best approach you can you know, start using for that thing. All right, thank you so much. Our next question is by Nikhil. He wants to know, what do you mean by clean UI UX? Can you please explain it to him again? So with the clean, I mainly refer to the minimalistic. So when you don't have, you know, so take it this way that for a design or for a user interface or for any screen you are designing, the best way you can look that screen is then you know at the time when there is not even a single element you can put out of it so you have to try to figure out to make it more and more clean and minimalistic that what are the features or the elements or anything you can you know just scratch so it's building it more minimalistic whatever is needed just have that on that thing on the paper or the screen or the design so that's what i mean with the clean ui ux all right, great. So a lot of questions are flowing in and we'll try to work within a one minute per question time frame. So I hope you guys will bear with us and Ravi will try his best to answer your questions within one minute. Our next question is by Mohit. He wants to know, user research insights are very critical when we shape the idea. Since we just have the perception of the user needs, how to accommodate a large base of user views into the lean process He's asking, since they're trying to pitch to uh, their idea to VCs, won't that be a bit early to go with half-cooked ideas in terms of refinement of the idea and the design per se? Okay. So I think even if you are pitching to the VCs, and uh, so I think I'm not sure that why VC, VCs would be interested in your approach. I think most, in most of the time VCs are interested in you know the end product, the problem you are solving and the, uh, how the end products is look like. And why Lean UX is the approach you are taking to reach the same point. So I think uh, I'm not sure that how VCs VC thinking or like you know large user base segment thinking is going to differ that. So in any case, you are reaching the same point, but it's the difference is, is in the approach you are taking to build that particular product. It's the approach you are taking to minimize that the time you are taking to build anything. So like I said, I think the one thing I think I would like to elaborate here as well is that lean UX is not the minimal UX. It's a different thing. Lean UX is also not the, you know, it's not a type of design which is satisfying a certain type of features. It's an approach to approach which you take to build certain UI or UX. This UI UX can be really complex with really interaction, you know, all the interactions and experiences, but it can be really simple. So it's it's the it's the approach you are taking for that. So it's about reaching the same point. You can satisfy all your users and everything, uh, and you can use lean UI UX approach even to do that. So it's more about the reaching it in a totally different way, bypassing all those complex processes, but reaching the same product, the same MVP you are building without using Lean UX or without with using Lean UX. So I think it's totally different from how you see that, okay, you know, with the VCs and everything. I think I hope I answered your question. All right. So if you have a follow-up question, Mohit, please feel free to type in. Meanwhile, Surat wants to ask a question and he would actually like 
to ask a question on the mic. So I am going to unmute Suraj. Suraj, please get clarity on your doubt. <laughs> Suraj, you are Yeah. Yeah, uh, so Ravi. Yeah, thank you, Priyanka. So, Ravi, what I want to uh, clarify here is when someone from the uh, audience asked about the slide 80 by 20, so covering the users probably is the main agenda while uh, designing the features. So, uh, can we consider the fact that on the basis of the frequency and the importance of the features, we can segregate that? Uh, sorry, can we uh, can you just repeat the last line? So, can we segregate the features? Probably that which feature, probably what are the features that we should take up for the users? So, like you have said, that we first should categorize the users, and then we uh, should consider. I mean, uh, find out the features right. from each user group. So, once we collect all the features, then we should see that importance and the frequency. So, on the basis of two parameters, we can. Uh, you know, um, filter out the features on which we should start working upon. Right. So two parents yeah, so, I'm talking uh, about. Yeah. yeah, so definitely, so I think you want the clarification on that answer. Okay. So I think uh, what I said is that first uh, you look at the users. Uh, you look at the users yeah. who are more important to you. So suppose if you are two, three segments of the user, so you look at which mm -hmm. segment of user is the most important to you and then you come back come to the features then you see that okay what are the features you are want to build or you are building for that segment of users and after that also once you have decided okay these are the 20 30 features you are going to build for that segment of users then you also yeah. do the same thing okay you know that you then apply the same rule okay out of these 20 30 yeah. features which i'm going to build for these this segment of users Okay, I'm going to build these top five features for that. And once you have built those top yeah. five, then you can take the rest of the features and build the you know top five out of them as well. So it's being continuous about this. Right. So that is yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Faraj, thanks for your question. I hope that we managed to answer it well. Um, so we will take our next question here. The next question is by Ankan. Ankan says, primarily, I am a back-end programmer and we have built a fat edtech product. Making changes now becomes very tedious and most of the front-end work was outsourced. I am already learning AngularJS. Should I also learn to prototype, design and maybe even HTML, CSS so as to test new features and experiments? Lean UX could be an answer, but how much time and learning curve I have to deal with? Or should I look for help outside? So managing time and focus as a founder already is already very hard for him. So it was a long question, so I hope you get it. Uh, if not, I can repeat the question for you, Ravi. Cool. No, I think I, I get the question like, really nicely. I think it's a pretty uh, really nice question. So. Yeah, definitely many developers or you can say entrepreneurs, you know, face this problem is that it's really in a really complex, you know, uh, product, it's really hard to communicate. So uh, I have this term which I use and which I describe is, uh, you know, being the reverse design, being the reverse in while, you know, working on the product. So not going from design to development, but coming, going from development to design. So in that scenario, you don't have to move into design, start, you know, learning the design flows and all that. But what you really need to do is start working with that, uh, that front end or any developer guy. Even if you're outsourcing it, then you should definitely check with them to sit on the, like, you know, sit together and then start doing that thing. So once they have this, maybe you know. So suppose you have outsourced, and they have this, the pen, paper, prototype, or anything, any screen flow they have, and then you stick with them, and then you see how much this is development friendly. So I think. Uh, so one thing I would like to take here is that you know there is this term called forking, which is the most most important problem you know which people face while doing it. So what happening is uh, if there is any design form or any development from and especially outs in when you have outsourced your front end development is that they try to you know 
change things a slight, a slight, a slight. So suppose they have built any element, then they build the second element out of it just by making few changes. And so they fork it and then they change it. And then so this is how they create many branches out of the same thing. And which is very hard for a developer to turn into code. And this turn into a like, you know really huge code and everything. So you should definitely sit with the guy who is designing this thing or doing the front end and see what are the extra things you can remove out of this and to make it more development friendly. So instead of going into learning all the screen flows and just for building the product, uh, the best approach is to sit with the guy and see that you are on the same page when it comes to you know development and the designing. So it's like being reverse, not from first designing it everything and then moving to the developer, but sitting together and then seeing that what are we designing is also development friendly or not. So I think Ankan, that I hope that answers your question. Thank you so much, Ravi, and I hope that answers your question, um, Ankan. So we are going to quickly take a few more questions here. Ramakrishnan wants to know: Does lean means the simple and the faster? Um, in some way, yes, the simple and the faster, definitely. All right. So our next question is by Nibu. He wants to know, when you first create a wireframe, it's usually very unimpressive. How do you keep stakeholders focused on the design and not the details? So I think, uh, yeah, maybe I answered this question before as well, but anyway, so I don't think why you want to pitch the uh, buyer friends to your like you know VC or anyone and even if that is the use case so it depends on you that how you are describing your problem and then you are coming in but if you the stakeholders or the VCs you are pitching in they are more interested in looking into the design then uh, the idea is that you take the lean UX approach if you want then build that particular product and then show them that product if they are, I mean, it's actually better than going into the Photoshop thing. And and if the, that is the case, that they are more interested into looking at the first the Photoshop screens, and then deciding it. So definitely, the I think you know what thing I would suggest is uh, taking here is your priority. That what is your pri priority? Keeping your uh, you know stakeholders there for the product, or uh, building the MVP really fast. So definitely you have to prioritize that if there is definitely a roadblock in that real case. So the best answer is that you prioritize that thing and then you decide, okay, what should be the best approach. Because I think if you are going to, if you have a simple screen and you're designing it on the Photoshop and if you have a right team, then I think in the same time you can even develop that screen as well. And definitely you can go to your stakeholders and show them. So it's, uh, I, at certain point of time, with no so much complications. It's more about the priority. Right. Uh, thank you so much. So our next question is by Tobias, and he wants to know: classic UX a lot of times helps to communicate the idea to all stakeholders. If the big picture is only in your mind, what effects does it have on the communication inside the team, especially larger teams? Yeah, so uh, definitely I think when I discussed the Lean UX, what I discussed is collaboration. So your designer and your developers should be on the same page with that. So these two teams when working with, especially with the MVPs and large team and you're building your uh, MVP, in that case these these two teams should not be, you know, different. They should be kind of the same process. So if someone is building that screen, the developer should know that why they are building it this way. So designer and developer should be on the same page and that's how you collaborate. So it's not that the complete team should be there, but uh, someone who is involved in this transition from converting the UX into the code. So there, there should be collaboration, there should be like, you know, they should be on the same table all the time to discuss what, how you are solving that problem, how you are designing it and then how you are going to develop it. So they, the, this transition should, should be very smooth and very collaborative. And if you have this collaboration really good, and I think then conveying information uh, in the complete team won't be any problem. 
right fair answer thank you so much uh, if you have a follow up question i would request you to please type in uh, tobias our next question is actually a very interesting question by shivam he wants to know lean ux bypasses most of the process although you get the product up quickly what exactly do you lose while being clean yeah so i think what what you lose is that complexity what i see is so i think now uh, you know things are turning into so being so agile is then so we build those specifications those products those guideline to build the you know complete to design and to do the wireframe cases scenarios and everything so we used to build the complete product one time and then turn, convert into code and then kind of ship it so this was the earlier approach so now the uh, approach is changing now things are becoming become turning into more and more agile people they deploy their changes daily they you know make features live daily they change screens they do the ab testing on the daily basis but this was not the case few years back at the time if you design this screen it's there for the next 2 years or 3 years and then you making any change but now changes are really rapid changes are really as i you make changes on your website maybe 3 times 4 times or 10 times a day so so it's more like using the new approach to fulfill, fulfill these things so if this is the case you are building if you are building any product agile so what you are losing is nothing you are losing the complexity and that's the good thing to lose so i don't see any negative thing in that because it's it's the process has changed the approach we design software with had to change and so to turn into more productive we have to change the approach so definitely we are losing the complexity here which is a, i think is a really good thing uh, all right great interestingly our next question by charu is also related to our previous question she is saying if we bypass most of the user centered design process won't the quality of deliverable depreciate yeah so definitely to certain extent you can say that but if you if you are doing the brand guidelining you are taking all the scenarios you are taking feedback you are doing the research definitely the end product is going to be really used but what exactly we are talking about here is building the mvp so not about the complete product but building the minimum viable product so in that case i think save this much time uh, losing that uh, chunk of quality is far better so when you are building the mvp the most important thing you want to do is you want to get it out there faster and you want to check things you want to take feedback and then you have want to validate your product so in that case losing that small chunk of quality is is valid actually so def but definitely you will lose something definitely you will lose some quality if you are not doing that much deep analysis but i think that's a fair trade off when you are building an mvp right we have at least 6 or 7 more questions so let's see if we can quickly take them up our next question is by jimmy he wants to know i nowadays i see a sign up button in login section is it a good idea to have sign up buttons in the login section or separate buttons on home page near the login button so i think uh, it's it's more about your product so if your product is something like you know people are not going to you have you don't have many new users who are going to come to your platform and it's the same old users who are using it more and more it's like you know a certain so maybe it's a b2b product and you are building it the same case then maybe having the sign up on the same page doesn't make sense but if your product is kind of b2c and there are many new users coming you know on the daily basis then having it uh, on that particular screen can help you in the you know you know more um, turning your new users into your registered users so this is the approach which this is something which your product can answer very nicely that what is the use case of your product and who are the users and how many are the new users coming on your website or your product um our next question is by karanpreet again he wants to know do you think bj fog model is useful to determine the top 20 features 20% of features i'm sorry
so I think as I heard is that uh, using Pareto's principle is used to determine 80 to 20 project. So I think that's what I use and uh, I have like you know worked with few other UI UX guys and even the developers and everything. So I think most of the people try to use it. So it's uh, so there are two ways you can use this. So if you are very restricted about the features, okay, these are the 100 features and uh, like, you know, okay, maybe let's take off case of a hackathon versus a building a complete product. So in hackathon, it's uh, that, you know, you can try to leave other 80 features and just build those 20 to show what exactly, what exact problem you are trying to solve. But if you are building a complete product and, you know, you are building a complete product MVP, in that case, you definitely don't want to lose on to the, you know, those 80 features. Maybe you want 40 definite features there to make it. So in that case, you apply that principle again and again. You first build those 20 features and then on the rest 80 features, so you again apply that rule. So this way you you'll be able to prioritize. Okay, these are these which are the most important things you want to do first. And in after that you apply it again to filter out. Okay, what are the next things most important things you want to do? So it's more about applying it one time and then applying it multiple times to make it more continuous and build uh, you know more products. Uh, even by not leaving out any important or required feature. I think I hope that answers your question. Um. I actually his question was about the BJ Fog model and not the Pareto model, but I believe you have not shared, uh, you have not used it before. If you have, please share your experience uh, using it. No, I uh, I definitely not you know I don't prefer to use BJ Fog model while working on the MVP. So the one principle I use is mostly definitely Pareto. So that's I think that's by choice. Uh, fair enough. So our next question is by Sahil and he wants to know, um, is it a good idea to use Lean UX for more mature products, especially when you have the time to enhance it? Do you think a Lean UX is often the best approach even when you have the time and resources to build a more enhanced version? Sure. So. Uh, when you have time, then I think what you can do is have the lean UX approach at the base, and then try to adapt the you know the more uh, more features. So maybe suppose you have the lean UX approach there, and you have uh, you also have the time. So now you figure out things like okay, so in the lean UX to improve it more, what I can add. So if I have more. If I've researched this particular use case more, then I think that will add more value. Then in case, you can take the research. And if you think uh, working on the brand guide, uh, brand guide lining and then working on the colors and using those rights can help me, then you can you know pull out the that particular thing out of those com complex UI process, uh, UX process I mentioned. So it's like fulfilling you, like you know, it's making your lean UX approach more robust. So you can pull out the features and the uh, based on the, your priority and the you know importance uh, as for uh, as much you have time for that. So it's like making it turning into you know a totally adaptive approach of yours, depending on how much time you have. All right, thank you so much. Our next question is by Mohit. Actually, this is his follow-up question. He had asked a question before, and he says that it was left a part of it was left unanswered. So the part that was not answered is user research insights are very critical when we shape the idea. Since we just have the perception of the user needs, how do they accommodate a large base of user views into the lean process? So will this mean that they will have many iterations to get to the right execution and how should he validate it? Yeah, sure. So I think uh, I try to answer that part as well. So when you are large segment of users and you are like, you know, this kind of thing. So I think the approach I take is not trying to satisfy all the, you know, all your large set of users for that and just try to, okay. So when you're, so specifically in this case, what I'm talking about is building the MVP. So in that case, you don't usually have that much large base of users and you don't worry about that much as well so because you are getting out your MVP, you are getting your mvp out so definitely you don't have the user base so by your case you are saying is more like you already have a large user segment user base and you want to see you want to research that how many are satisfying you know kind of 
uh, adapting to that. So I think in that case, lean UX is not coming in your way. What you should do is trying to, you are trying to do the more research to satisfy the last set of users. So your use case here is using a very simple A-B testing tool. And then using that feedback into your lens, you know, when you are starting to do the next, next lean UX approach. So suppose you have designed any screen with the lean UX approach and then it's live, then you are taking feedback from this large set of users you have, maybe through the A-B testing or any other tool or in anything you are using. And once you have that thing in your mind, then using that for the, again, in the lean UX approach to design the different kind of screen or different kind of flow. So it's like, you know, it's kind of independent of working with the lean UX approach. Thank you so much. Mohit, I hope that answers your question. If not, you can type your question in right away or you can type it, uh, send it to us or at webinars at sujan.in. You can also reach out to Ravi uh, at the Twitter handle that's there on the screen right now if you have a more specific question that you'd like him to answer. Uh, our next question is by Kedar and he wants to know, is persona or scenario a key to be involved in the lean UX process? And is there a different way to build the persona and scenario? Yeah, I think it's very important to have the scenario of your product into, you know, when you're doing the UIX. Uh, the way you can do is depends on uh, the, your approach, actually. That uh, uh, it actually depends on the, you know, designer's approach, that how he wants to use the scenarios. But definitely having scenarios is the most important thing you, you should have, in, while, even while working in the Lean UX. And, uh, to a certain point, it turns into that you know in in what time how long, you know you know how much time you want to ship your product and for that what exactly you can trade off. So definitely having more and more so maybe scenario and maybe having other features as well definitely add value. But it's definitely you know after a certain point of time it will turn into a trade off. So if you think scenario is the most scenario is the most important part and in specifically in you know in case of your product if it's very important then definitely you should you know, have the scenario case in your product, in your design process. Okay, thank you so much. Our next question is by Yogesh. He's saying, UX is about providing delight to the users. Doesn't using Lean dilute the UX? Because even test users that we go to do not like something that is half-baked and not working. Yeah, sure, but uh, what I want to clarify here is that, uh, again, that, uh, you know, it's not that you are building anything half. It's that you are building something which is just minimum required. So it's not half, but it's minimum required. Uh, so it's like that. It's not incomplete, but it's minimum which is required. I think I'm making myself like very clear. So uh, in, in, for that case, there is nothing your user is going to complain of. Definitely they will ask for the more features, okay, I can have this and I can have that. But when you are, you are building that MVP, that's the first thing, that's the thing actually you want to have, that your user are satisfied with the product and now they, are want, they want more. Then you have the more list of features and then you again decide, okay, what are, what are the features and the, you know, really useful and I want to build in my product. So that's the case. So I think, yeah, I hope that answers your question. So, but it's not about building the half product, it's building the minimum product actually. So it's more like building the minimum viable UX. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, so it's about building the minimum viable UX, but not building it half. So it's building the full, but minimum, not building anything extra in this. So that's, I think, the very simple way to answer this. Um, another question, there's a very interesting question by Ankita. She wants to know, Agile is iterative and so is Lean UX. So are they both different? And if not, could they both work together? Yes, actually they are not different. Agile, in terms of if you talk about the development, then I think they are not at all different and definitely they should work together. So if there is any you know new feature coming in then definitely designer and developer should be on the collaborative page and definitely they should work on the same page. So working on the same platform and the same page and same thoughts will definitely more. And I don't think these are these two approaches are like you know kind of different. Being lean UX is also being agile. I hope it answers your question Ankita. If not please feel free to type 
in another question. Otherwise, you can mail it to us at webinars at surgeon.in. Kedar has another question. He wants to know, in MVPs, how do we see the larger picture and how do we communicate it to the stakeholders? So this is similar to what you have answered before, but would you like to take it up in a different way? Yeah, sure. I think I can try to clarify it more. So, uh, I mean, when you are talking to a stakeholder, so I think I will try to see from the stakeholder's point. So if you are, even you are talking to a stakeholder, and then suppose they are interested into this larger picture and uh, you want to convey the same larger picture as you know as a entrepreneur as a founder then you can use the lean UX approach but use it in the iterative method so you have built a simple MVP in the very you know short time then you again apply this approach to build more set of user you know more set of features onto your product and then you apply it again so I think even if you're going to use this particular approach instead of going through that complex complete complex process and I think this would save more time from the earlier case and in the I think you know in, in the less time you will be able to even deliver that larger picture to your stakeholders because in any case if you are taking that another approach with very complex process and then building the complete picture and then showing to stakeholders I think that approach will take more time instead of being lean UX and then applying this approach again and again to build the complete set of features and everything. Okay, so his, he has another follow-up question. He wants to know who and how do we decide what's the minimum that is required in terms of features? Yeah, so I think I, meant, I mentioned in the very first thing is that you apply the Pareto's principle here. You say no to every feature. So it's like on the e-commerce website, so suppose you have four payment methods and you don't have time to build the four payment methods. So then you apply this principle. Okay, for, my, for the set of users I have on my website is going for you know the payment through the Visa card or maybe the MasterCard or maybe the PayPal which one is the most important so I think this is the one use case similarly you can apply it on the same thing so you have to prioritize what are the features your product will be incomplete without what are the 10 features out of those 20 important you want to have that there is no way you can skip these features and I think saying no to almost everything is how you decide what you know to which feature is there which you there is no way you can say no to it and that's what you want to keep on the top Um, Kedar also has, has added that it beats the purpose of the conventional UCD of building the IA and then build the details. Uh, I hope you can connect the dots Ravi. I think he's, he's commenting on, on your answer. Uh, actually, I, your, voice, your voice is ringing. Can you just repeat it? Yeah. Uh, Kedar is saying it beats the purpose of the conventional UCD of building the IA and then build the details. Uh, so, I mean, I think in one way that's true, but uh, why being, un, you know, uh, why being away from the path and then doing it, you know, another way is, I don't see why it's you know, in any way wrong. So, and definitely it's like, you know, personal opinion as well, so that you are using uh, the unconventional way or like unconventional way and then using it. So, I don't see why, I mean, that's, I think, more into a, like, you know, kind of personal opinion. Uh, um, it's more about what value you want to bring in with what with what approach you want to like you know you can bring it more and more. I hope uh, that I answers your question. Yeah, I hope so too. So it's more about personal choice, Kedar, than it's about being conventional and non-conventional. Okay. So um, since you took an example of e-commerce site, we have a, a question by Nikhil. He wants to know what kind of UI should be there in e-commerce sites in terms of modern UI trends. Okay, I think this question is not with the, the topic we are discussing, but in any way, it's, I mean, it's more like the, it's more from the, you know, kind of founder's perspective or anything. You cannot say, okay, this is, this is the only right approach. So it depends on the kind of user set you have. So it depends on, you know, what kind of user set you have and what kind of features and how they like the things. So there is no single 
where you can say okay this is right and this is wrong when it comes to UI UX there can be hundred ways you can solve the same navigation and the same flow uh, but there can be hundred ways you can solve that particular problem and it's really hard it's really hard to say that this is right or this is wrong but it's really easy to say that this is working and this is not working so it's definitely not about being and right and wrong but building your product and then doing some iterations through the A-B testing or through feedback and seeing what's working for you. So it's more into what's working and what's not working than being what's right and what's not. Alright, um, I know we have stretched quite a bit but we are going to quickly take one last question here by Yogesh. He wants to know when should you start you know, the MVP approach and start building the real product? This is also slightly unrelated, but I hope you will be able to answer it. Yeah, sure. So uh, what I would like to tell here is the approach I take is so I never, um, in my personal the way I do it is I never turn, um, I mean, I never differentiate the MVP from the real product um, because maybe the personal opinion is that I want to build the product really simple and really clean. So the way I do it is I apply the same approach again and again. So it's like building you know MVP and then building the what what's left then building MVP out of it then again what's left then building again you know MVP out of it so I kind of apply this approach again and again to you know to move my product forward instead of looking at these two things are at really different okay this is my MVP but now I'm going to build the same product and I think I mentioned this on the slide as well so I have this bigger picture in mind and then I build some part of this and then out of the remaining part I built, I took another important part like very basic and very minimal and then I again build this so this is how I extend my features from MVP to that so for me the complete product is kind of building MVP and that's how I take the approach and I think I hope so after that it's if you think that these are the two things your product and your MVP is different then I think transitioning I think this is the best approach actually you can take is taking things if you have Agile, your development and your workflows are agile, then you should be you should keep these things and you should not take these two things very different from each other. Thank you so much, Ravi. Since we have already exceeded the time limit, I would request those who still have questions to please mail them at webinars at Swigen.in or you can also tweet your question directly to Ravi or at a Swigen, uh, at our uh, Twitter handle at the rate Swigen. Thank you so much once again, Ravi, for such a knowledgeable session and answering all the questions very patiently. We are sure everyone found your presentation very interesting and insightful. A big thank you to all the attendees for joining us in today's session. I would also like to announce that our next webinar is on using social media and technology for social change on 26th of November by Anshul Tiwari. Anshul is the founder and editor-in-chief of youthkiawaaz.com, India's largest online platform for young people to express themselves on issues of importance. In this webinar, Anshul will share how businesses can tap into social media to create conversations for social change. Once again, thank you so much for joining us in today's webinar. I hope you enjoyed it. So stay tuned and have a great day, guys.